Hey guys, welcome back to Rock Hill Kids Midweek. We'll be getting started in about 30 seconds, so go grab your Bible and grab a pencil um, for our lesson today, and we'll be getting started very shortly. Hello and welcome to our Rock Hill Kids Midweek Worship Service. My name is Aaron Adalian and I am so happy to have you joining us for worship. Every week we will be posting a midweek worship video for you to worship our great God with us. This is a time for you to slow down in the middle of your week and focus on God. Thank you so much for joining us today. Let's get started by worshiping God through some songs together.
Hey guys, Mr. Aaron here. I hope you're doing good. Welcome to Midweek. Today is a little bit different. Um, we are going to be filming this in my backyard. Um, but we, we also, um, we're, I just kind of thought we should change things up just a little bit, um, just for today. Um, one of the things that, that has been on my heart that God has been teaching me is something that my son asked me um, yesterday um, as we were getting ready for bed. He asked me, how do I know when I'm ready to put Jesus in charge of my life? Um, if you've been watching these videos, um, we have been, last month, we were talking all about Easter and the events leading up to Easter and Jesus' death and burial and resurrection and what he did for us on the cross. Um, this month, we've been talking all about the true stories uh, that came out of the new church that started after Jesus went up into heaven and his disciples started telling everybody about Jesus. Um, these churches started and um, man, there's some amazing stories that we have learned about um, during this time. And before we move on from our true story theme, there's one more story that I want you to know. There's this, a true story that happened right before um, where we would have picked up when we we're starting to learn about Jesus and Easter um, in the book of Matthew, Matthew um, chapter 19. So if you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 19. We're going to be reading verses 16 through 26. And like I said, my son asked me, um, how do you know when you're ready to become um, a Christian? How do you know when you're ready to put Jesus in charge of your life? Um, and that's one of the things I thought we could look at today, that we could look at what it means to follow Jesus and um, how you know when you're ready to. Um, one of the things that, that my son and I were talking about was God's family. And he asked me, am I a part of God's family? And I got to share with him that you are a part of God's family if you've done several things. So if you've done, uh, if you've had a conversation with Jesus about your sin. So if you know that you are a sinner, that you know, so you, there's three things. Admit that you're a sinner. Believe that Jesus is God's son, that he is who he said he was and did what he said he could do. And confess Jesus as Lord and Savior. Ask Him to be in charge of your life, to be boss over your life. Um, that is all that it means that you need to do to follow Jesus. Um, and He substitutes our life that deserves death, that has a payment of death on it because of our sin. He substitute that, substitutes that with His life that had no sin, that was perfect. And that God sees as pleasing to pay our punishment. And so we get to be a part of God's family when we do that. And so he was asking, how will he know when he's ready to do that? And so we're going to look in the book of Matthew. We're going to be in Matthew 19. We're going to be in verses 16 through 26. And we're going to be reading about a man that a lot of times in the Bible they call him the rich young ruler. Um, and we're going to be, he's going to be talking and asking Jesus some questions. So listen carefully to these questions. It says this. It says, someone came to Jesus with this question. Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? Why ask me about what is good? Jesus replied, there is only one who is good. But to answer your question, if you want to receive eternal life, keep the commandments. Which ones? the man asked. And Jesus replied, You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. Honor your father and mother. Love your neighbor as yourself. I, I've obeyed all these commands, the young man replied. What else must I do? Jesus told him, If you want to be perfect, go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. But when the young man heard this, he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth, it is very hard for a rich person to enter the kingdom of heaven. I'll say it again. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astounded. Then who, can, who in the world can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible. But with God, 
everything is possible. So check this out. So a man comes to Jesus, and the first thing he asks him is what deed, deed, like thing that he has to do to inherit um, the kingdom of, of God. And he says, what good deed? So he thinks that there's something that he can do, that he can be good enough to inherit the kingdom of God that he thinks he can make his own way to the, to the kingdom of God if he just knows how. And Jesus tells him there's only one that is good. And so he, he's trying to point him to, hey, there's nothing that you can do. There's no good deed, good enough, that you can do to inherit the kingdom of God. There's only one person that is good that can do that for you. And he's going to try to teach him about himself. But the man doesn't understand. So God, Jesus says... Um, Follow all of my commandments. And he says, well, what commandments? And Jesus gives them some commandments. And which is funny, all these commandments that he gives them, Jesus talks about them in a, in a sermon that he preached called the Sermon on the Mount. And he pretty much tells everybody that we have all, we have all sinned in those ways. Isn't that crazy? That, that Jesus is telling him that you have to do this to inherit eternal life. If you want to do it on your own, you have to do this. But everybody has sinned and done that. So no one can inherit eternal life. Oh, um, And so the man said, so what, I've done all those. So the man's not understanding. He doesn't understand that Jesus is saying, you haven't. No one has done all those things. And when the man says he has, Jesus tells him, um, he, he, he asks he ask him to sell all of his possessions and follow him. So to give up everything to follow him. Because that's the only way that, that God, that, that Jesus substitutes himself for us, for our payment. He, he does that for us when we choose to follow him. And so Jesus is telling him how to inherit eternal life. Well, the man is very sad because he has a lot. He has so much. He is a rich man. Um, and and this, this story is, is very sad to me because I believe that many of us want to keep everything we have and invite Jesus into our lives to, to do what we want to do. But that's not how it works. Jesus wants you to get rid of your life that deserves death and follow him because he has a plan that equals so much more. Our life equals death and separation from God forever. But his plan and his life, when we choose to follow him, it equals eternal life in heaven. We get the kingdom of God. That is what he's offering. He's saying, I have so much more to give you. What you like and what you are loving is on this earth and it will come and go and it will be gone eventually. But what I have to offer you will never go away. It will be good for you on this earth, but also good for you in heaven for eternity. Jesus is telling him everything about what it means to follow him. And, and one of the things that I think... I think stands out to me about this story is that this man comes up to Jesus and he looks like the person that everybody would want um, to be a follower of, of them. He has money. He, he is a good man. Um, but Jesus turns him away. What's really funny is right before this story in the Bible, there's another story about some people that Jesus didn't turn away. There were people that didn't look like Jesus. They would be good followers of Jesus. In fact, his disciples told them that they couldn't come to him. They were children. They were children, and they wanted to come to Jesus, and parents were bringing them, and the disciples were stopping them. And right before this, this story of the rich young ruler, we find out that Jesus gets upset with his disciples for stopping them and says to allow the children to come to him. You see, Jesus sees things differently than we do. Um, Jesus isn't worried about how much you have or what you've done or, um, or what, you could, what your life looks like. He knows all about his good plan. It's perfect. And without him, he knows that all of your life, no matter what it is, is empty. It's nothing. And so he invites us to be a part of his plan and to substitute, which means take the place of our payment that we owe on our life 
for sin. Sin is anything that we do that's choosing our way instead of God's way. It's, it's disobedience to God. It separates us from God forever. And the Bible says that all people have sin and all have this payment on their life. And the Bible also says that we cannot pay this payment. We cannot live perfectly enough. There's nothing we can do. Just like the rich young ruler asked, there's no good deed that we can do to take this punishment. Jesus made us valuable with his own life. We're valuable because Jesus said we were valuable. Check out the screen. I want you to see something. This is a picture that helps us understand what Jesus did for us and how we can put him in charge of our life. Do you see the picture? It says all people are not in God's family. Why? Because of sin. My son last night asked me if he was a part of God's family, and I told him he can be and how to do that. And we're going to be talking about how we can do that. You see, sin separates us from God. Um, the wages of sin is death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You see, the Bible tells us that the wages, the payment for sin is death. And we deserve death because we have all sinned. That's what Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says that the payment for that sin is death. And John 3.16 tells us that God didn't leave us that way, that God loved us so much that he provided a way for us. Um, and in the picture, you'll see that sin separates us from God because we all have sin and we all deserve death. Um, sin is choosing anything that's our way instead of God's way. Um, but Jesus lived a life that we couldn't live without sin and died a death that we deserved for our sin so that we wouldn't have to be separated from God forever. Do you see the, pe the people on the cliff and how they're separated and there's sin in between them. This is almost like a picture of what it's like when we have sin in our life. It separates us from God. You remember Adam and Eve in the Bible, um, at the beginning of the Bible, and, and they sin and they're no, no longer able to be with God in the garden. And God has to send them away because God cannot be around sin and every single person that's ever lived since then has sinned and so when we look at this picture we see that sin separates us from God and that there's no way for us to get past this chasm this giant gap that we can't jump we can't fly we can't roller skate we can't um, do anything to make ourselves good enough to get to where God is because we cannot be holy um, and so Jesus comes in that place. And so to put Jesus in charge of our life, we have to do three things. We have to know that we're a sinner and that we need Jesus. We have to know that we are a sinner and that we're separated from God and that we need Jesus. We also have to know who Jesus is, that he is God's son and that he did what he said he would do in the Bible by dying on the cross to the feet um, the punishment of death um, and that he came back to life and ro rose back into heaven because we have to know he is who he said he was and did what he said he would do and then we have to confess and ask him to be in charge of our life saying we don't want to live our way anymore that sinful life we want to turn away from that and we want to live for you Jesus take our life and make it yours um, and that's how you become a part of God's family. And you know when you're ready to become a part of God's family, when you feel like you know that you need Jesus because you are separated from God. And that need that you have helps you to know that you're ready to make that decision, that you have to have Jesus. Um, it also, like our story said, when, you, when you're ready to make that decision, you also know that it it costs you everything. You're saying, I don't want to live my way anymore. So I don't want to be um, living my life for me. I'm not asking Jesus to be a part of what I'm doing. I'm saying, I don't want to live my way anymore. I want to live Jesus's life 
through me. I want him to be the one that's in charge of everything I do. And so when you know that you're willing to give up everything to follow Jesus, that's when you know you're ready. And if you are ready, we would love for you to um, let us know at the church, and we'd love to talk to you about it. But the best thing that you can do if you're ready to make that decision is talk to your parents about making that decision. And they can help you know what, what it was like when they became a Christian. They can help you know all kinds of things about how to make that decision. Guys, I have enjoyed our time together today. Um, I know it was a little bit different, but I am so thankful for all of you guys. Um, we love you, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Let's stand and sing our last Seeds Family Worship song. Oh, 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 oh,